This is the Fryzen. It's for Ryzen. Fryzen. Fryzen. Can you cool me now? For Ryzen. It's Fryzen. Fryzen. Deep cool. Gamer Storm. Fryzen. It's a tower cooler. It's an asymmetric tower cooler, which fits in the footprint of Threadripper. You can kind of see that. So the cold plate on this is designed for Threadripper, but it will work on AM4, uh, you know, AM3 plus, FM1, whatever. It comes with the mounting plate for that as well, but it's really designed for Threadripper, or at least the cold plate size is. Now, this is not a cooler that I would recommend that you're gonna run this with like the 2990WX but we did our testing with the 1950 with a 4.1 gigahertz overclock. It does struggle a little bit to keep up with the 1950 uh, overclock. Now we were comparing that to the Noctua, the big, you know, 150, like the NDH-15 made for Threadripper Noctua cooler. Spoiler alert, the Noctua cooler does better, but the Noctua cooler is also more expensive. This is a smaller cooler that fits in the envelope around the Threadripper socket. So if you're running the Noctua cooler, the fan will hang over your RAM slots or actually occupy the same space where your RAM would be. You can slot it up on the heatsink so that the fan will sort of stick off the top of the heatsink a little bit or use smaller fans. So it's not really a lot of an issue on the Noctua side of things, but you do sort of get a little bit of a blockage there. With the Frozen cooler, it fits in the cooling envelope for, um, uh, you know, or the, the, the physical envelope for cooling for Threadripper. It is not as large of a cooler as the, uh, you know, the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper that you may have seen in the press releases from, from AMD. Nevertheless, this is a good and competent cooler. Uh, it does actually work pretty well, even with the 4.1 gigahertz overclock. So for testing, like for the side-by-side, -side, for the comparison, um, we did the testing in a Fractal Mesh Phi C, which is a great case. It has, uh, the case that we have it set up has 240 millimeter fans in the front. This is not super scientific. It is a little subjective because it will perform differently depending on other cases and how much airflow there is. But the Mesh Phi C has great airflow. So 240 millimeter fans in the front, basically blowing directly into the tower cooler and then exhausting the warm air out the back. So in a side-by-side -side comparison, the uh, Verizon cooler had a little bit more difficulty keeping the uh, CPU cooler. And so as a result, performance suffered a little bit. But if you look at the benchmarks here, you know we're talking about 45 seconds to compile the Linux kernel. We're talking about 2.3 million samples per second on the Indigo Bench benchmark run. We're testing under Ubuntu with the Pharonix test suite just to see how things ran. It did pretty well. Uh, 1950 at stock settings, the 2950 at stock settings, the stock TDP, this cooler would have no problem keeping up. It does have RGB. It is an addressable digital RGB setup. So you can do that. The fan design is also unique. Well, the, the fin design I think is a bit unique and the fan design is unique because each fan has like sort of a little secondary airfoil and that does seem to help airflow. Again, not super scientific, just subjectively testing this cooler to see what it does. So if you're wanting to put Threadripper in a smaller system, the Mesh Phi C is a smaller case. The large tower coolers barely fit in that case you will have a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more room to move around in cases like the Fractal Mesh Phi C with a cooler like this. I mean, the Wraith Ripper cooler is a monster and the Noctua cooler is a little smaller than that. And this is smaller still. Now Noctua does have two other size coolers, uh, you know, just for comparison's sake, but I was looking for cooling capacity versus noise. This also will ramp up to 2300 RPM, which is quite loud. Uh, but the 2300 RPM, it does very effectively dissipate the heat. The Noctua cooler, I think, tops out at about 2000 RPM, give or take. So all in all, performance, RGB aesthetic, pretty good. Packaging is really good. It's got the nice packaging with, with foam and, uh, you know, it's really well put together. It comes with an installation wrench, which will help you install it. But me personally, I'd rather just use a long Phillips screwdriver because I'm using it on the designator motherboard, the Gigabyte designator motherboard in that fractal mesh if I see. And I don't really have an easy way to use the wrench at the top of the motherboard without completely dismounting it. If you're doing a first time system assembly, it's gonna make more sense for you to install the heatsink before you install the motherboard, if at all possible. So definitely do that. But for me, where it was sort of an aftermarket upgrade and test, didn't really have that opportunity. We also use the Deep Cool 
thermal grease uh, for our diagnostics. And so the recommended thermal layout thing for deep cool is nine dots. We did that because why not? The thermal grease does seem to be effective. So again, not super scientific, sort of subjective, but uh, all in all, nice job. I, I sort of like what Deep Cool is doing. Uh, they're they're always working on interesting technologies. This is a patent pending design um, for this this particular tower cooler, and it is surprisingly effective considering how relatively small it is. But it does have some heft. I mean, you could really you could really hurt somebody if you threw this at them. So that's exciting. Gamer Storm, Verizon. Gamer Storm for Verizon. Game, Gamer Storm Verizon for 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 Rock. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and you can find me at the Level One Forums.